Hey, are you spending money on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, but no one is responding to your ads? It's time for you to explore the C word. Stick around and I'll tell you what it is. I'll be right back. A lot of times people want to give you everything all at once. When you see too much information, you're going to say, I'm going to read that later. You're not going to read it later. Look at that engagement level. And it's very unlikely that this is the ad. And the fact that they're using images and videos mean that the Facebook algorithm loves them. With these comments and shares, there's a direct correlation with the number of posts that are created. You need to be able to create that content in order to drive attention to your profile. Hey, welcome to ACM Live a show that covers the digital marketing world from a Caribbean perspective. I'm your host, Pauline Joseph, and with over a decade of experience, I've made enough mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> Before we get into it, we go live every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and I know that you're busy, so I think you should let social media do the work for you and get notification on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube when we go live because th this is things that you want to learn. Trust me. Trust me. Today, we are talking about the C word, and that is collaboration. I'm shifting the premise of influence because it, it have a bad rap. People don't want to be a calling influencer. People don't want to be associated with influencers. But at the end of the day, we're all being persuaded to do things. Digital persuasion. Let's, let's find all these different terminologies for influence, right? And when it comes to influence, it means different things to different people. And collaboration is one of the best forms of ways for you to maximize that money that I spoke about earlier in the introduction. So a lot of the times, if you don't have the backing of a platform that has an engaged following, meaning they have people who like, share, comment on their content, if you're just willy-nilly spending money on a post that no one's engaging with, you're losing money. So let's look at different ways that you can collaborate. You can look at sponsored social media content, right? Um, there are ways for you, and this is a... a blog that we are pulling from shanebarker.com and it look it looks at the effective types of influencer collaborations and it's important for us now more than ever to collaborate because we're in a time that we need to work together to get the job done so there's there's certain forms there's social media content sponsorship there's gifting right? So in hopes that the person will be able to say, okay, hey, I got this and let me go share this with my audience. There's sponsor blog posts. We're going to cover a little bit more in, in its real, realist form in a bit, but this is just giving you an insight and you could check in the link below. We're going to put that uh, when we are finished with this live, we're going to put the link to this. Uh, but let's let's look at it because you have the brand ambassador program as well. So there's all these different sub segments of influencer uh, marketing. And when it comes to sponsored social posts, that's self-explanatory, especially, and we're going to show it to you later in the feature content for Instagram. Those are things that you can uh, throw money behind. There's the gifting, which allows you to give a product. You know, it gets a little more difficult when you have a service. So let's look at this example from LinkedIn Local where they're sponsored blog posts. So we get an opportunity. Oh, don't want to hide my face. <laughs> we get an opportunity to connect with somebody who has an audience or who is trying to build one while you are building your SEO on your website. So that's a good way for you to collaborate. And that's what we do for LinkedIn Local Caribbean. We have a lot of individuals who have businesses that want access to our thousand plus uh, audience for LinkedIn Local Caribbean. So they're able to do that. Guest blogging is 
top tier tip for you to make sure and collaborate with an influencer or somebody who is willing to give that information in terms for their exposure. We could also look at takeovers where somebody is, this is a little tricky sometimes for a lot of brands because they don't want to uh, <laughs> uh, open their social media to any questionable behavior. But these takeovers are important because what happens is that particular influencer or collaborator is going to say, hey, head over to this particular platform because we are going to be there and we're going to take over their social media platform. I've seen this work extremely well for the Oscars, for the Grammys. A lot of these award shows who are slowly but surely dying, they're trying to be you know, with it. And this particular example is actually Rihanna's Fenty Beauty brand. And you can't go wrong with makeup. There's also the brand ambassador take on things, which means that you're going to have somebody who has an existing following and is going beyond influence. So I see this a lot of times with, um, well, this example is uh, a future guest of our show. Uh, he's very insightful for what he's built. But the difference between a brand ambassador and an influencer is that long-term contract. These are people who usually will you know, put on their bio, brand ambassador of your particular brand, and that's an ongoing connection that helps your SEO and content creation for your business. Choose your brand ambassadors wisely, <laughs> right? That's extremely important for your business. So let's head over to Instagram ads uh, for creators. And this is how brands can get more eyes on their products or services. With this feature, allows you to collaborate. And it was something that I remember in beta, they rolled out. It was, you know, testing because we usually are the last in the Caribbean to get these things. But you can collaborate and identify the fact that you are a brand connected with this individual. So I believe we have some audio on this. So you can go ahead and play. We're making guac, guacamole, guacamole, whatever you call it. It's delicious. Let's go. Carefully cut your avocado. Avocado around the pit. Hope that it's good. Bam! That is an amazing feature that your business need to be part of. And it's something that is applicable, not just for products, but I must say something I saw recently that's pretty awesome is on Amazon, you have this whole subsection of live content that you have an opportunity to be part of. I saw Caribbean chef, uh, chef, <laughs> chef focusing on uh, the iron, um, pans, which by the way, I recently bought and I thought I was really bad at only to realize that I wasn't keeping the iron, um, uh, frying pan on the stove long enough. So stuff was sticking. I wish I would, had caught that live before I, <laughs> I messed up my pan, but those are the types of things you want to look at. And those are the spaces that you want to be in because you're not just looking at somebody influencing your potential customer, but you're looking for that instant call to action, which is extremely important um, in the e-commerce space, right? You shouldn't start anything without a plan. And I feel like that should be default, but I'm just going to reiterate that's extremely important. And any collaboration that you go into, make sure you set goals, you set KPIs, this is the length of time this partnership is going to be, and these are the things we need to achieve. And you have touch points to say, okay, after the first three months, this was achieved, this wasn't achieved, why wasn't it achieved? These are all important aspects of collaboration. So let's look at uh, a review, <laughs> um, because there are two forms of collaborations, and that's the intentional kind, and that's the viral luck kind. <laughs> viral luck is usually associated with somebody who's pretty good at what they do, uh, as well as they have an existing audience that somebody has uh, said, okay, this is great. Can we uh, feature this? And this is what happened with 
uh, doing digital rights segment, we have Shimalicious Pizza. She's coming up soon in a couple of weeks' time. Her interview was very insightful and her story is amazing. But part of her story includes this particular collaborator, influencer called Rendila, Rendilina. I hope I did your name justice. And she has created an audience that when she tried their saltfish pizza and she featured it, it helped the business tremendously. And this is without cost. So a lot of the times you have an opportunity to have intentional collaborations for both you and the influencer because it's in their best interest to create content. And it's important for you to do your research on these influencers and make sure that it aligns with your brand. It's a lot to digest, but it's also extremely important for you to know. Um, uh, it's a husband and wife team, the Rendilina Reviews. I believe they also have a pretty decent following on Facebook. But guys, food is such a ready-made piece of content. Anything to do with food and social media, the hashtags alone will show you on Instagram. Things like food porn, um, uh, fo food reviews. Those hashtags have extremely large followings. So if you are in the food industry and not on Instagram and not collaborating, you're doing business wrong. I said it. I said it. <laughs> All right, so we're going into the uh, viral luck <laughs> segment because, as I mentioned earlier, there's intentional collaborations in the viral luck. And just a quick story to this segment I'm going to share with you. This was not planned. As you can see, this particular video didn't have proper angles. I just um, recorded my focus was on audio, and I did record the video with intention of going behind these scenes with a focus on the guest, which is Dr. Terry Carell in Jamaica, my very first visit in Jamaica. Um, but the data has proven that we are in search of Caribbean content because this is right now the most popular YouTube uh, video we have. And this is a clip about the importance of branding. Let's take a look. I think what's unique with you, and this is me going into my marketing mode as well, is, I mean, you can show this in your portfolio. You actually have a following. Mm -hmm. So your following is even of more value oh, to somebody sure. who hires you. Because not only are they getting your services, but they're getting Brand your equity. audience. For sure. Right? And I don't know if it's um, similar in your industry in, in Jamaica, but I feel like in the Caribbean, our businesses tend to pull on to information. Oh, God. So we don't like to share, whereas you have these big businesses in the tech world sharing technology, mm -hmm. sharing information mm -hmm. for the betterment of the industry. Oh, sure. But we, like... Building audiences and loyalty and communities. We, like for me, in my space, digital marketing across the Caribbean, mm -hmm. we tend to hold on to information. We tend to treat um, it like this thing that gives us some sort of <laughs> competitive advantage. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's suffering because you have all these hustlers who are being taken advantage of. And then you have the people who are charging a thousand percent more, but monopoly, right? So how is that in your space? Um, I think <laughs> my space as a, as a, as a personal brand, um, I think I, I've seen things uh, do better. I think people share a lot of information. I think where you would see the holding, the withholding of information is when it comes to influencer marketing, where everyone recognizes who are the influencers in the space, but nobody wants to talk about well, how much do you charge. Mm. So you have some people who enter the space and now they're being approached by corporate Jamaica and they're just like, okay, so um, how much? How much should I charge? You know, you, you just don't know. Similar to when I entered into the event hosting space, I didn't have a point of reference. How much do I charge? So I started charging very low until I realized what my value was and then I quickly mm -hmm. switched out. It's the same thing. So I think in influencer marketing, a lot of people hold on in, you know, information in terms of what price they should negotiate. For me personally, I'm an open book. People ask me anything. I'll be very honest with them. So I'll have people send me messages saying, 
I'm, you know, I'm, I want to pitch something, I want to cut a contract, well, how much do you think I should charge? And I will ask them questions like, I'm almost like a consultant, you know. I was about to say, you need to start a week. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and it's a lot, I get a lot of these questions. Girls, so, to make shop and read us. Right, so, you know, I do this, I do that, mm-hmm. I have this, they want me to do this, I'm asking them for the scope, and I'm like, listen, mm. if they ask you for this much, they're actually going to really want you to do this much. Mm. So you have to plan with that contingency. Mm-hmm. So don't, don't charge them this amount and don't give yourself room. These are conversations that people don't readily have. And so I realize when I give information, people go off, it works out for them, they come back and they tell me, oh, it worked out. Great, awesome. That person now becomes a, a huge part of my community. And whenever, whenever they go and they speak about me, or if I'm in a, you know, they're in a room, they're going to speak of me highly. It does not take anything mm-hmm. away. Yes. From me. I I can relate. My roommate always, he and I always have this conversation about what value, um, in terms of like giving things for free. Because mm-hmm. I'm so passionate about it. He's like, why you keep doing this? Like mm-hmm. people are not paying you. I was just like, I can't help it because if you ask me, I'm going to tell you and I'm going to back. dissect everything. Because it it's who back. I am, you know? It, it comes back though. I can tell you each time I have said, here, you give somebody the olive branch, I've always told people this, it comes back two times fold. Mm -hmm. So to every free information you give out, you get three more opportunities where you make money. Okay, great. You you can't live in this world individualized and you have to realize that I am where I am because somebody gave me an opportunity. We all kind of have this idea that we're all self-made. Oh, Mm, you know, I just woke up like this. (laughs) I just made myself like this. It doesn't work that way. Every single person in this world who is anybody got an opportunity because somebody said, let me give you a boost. Let me, let me, let me, let me make you sit down in the room with these people. Mm-hmm. We've all got assistance in some way, shape or form. So don't know when you get to a certain level, behave like you did this all on your own, which is why I believe in the power of giving back. You must give back and you must send that elevator back down if it's even for one person. Mm. If you can change a life with advice for one person, yo, you're already ahead. Yeah. Everybody got a, a, a boost or a boost from somebody else. So why you find it so hard to do it for somebody else? That's rubbish. Hey, if you're just joining us, that was a clip from the live from uh, the Caribbean podcast originally coming out of the LinkedIn local community. That's Dr. Terry Carell Reed. She's based out of Jamaica, and we're here talking about influencers and the importance of it for your business. Hi to Faith uh, in Barbados. Um, Come a Marion here in the house. So I don't really do the accent very well, so I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> uh, but going to the conversation with Dr. Terry Carell, that particular video was something that I wasn't going to post because I, I thought it was just a focus on the audio. But thankfully, shout out to Gloria and one of the volunteers of LinkedIn Local Caribbean. She did the edits. She uploaded it. And currently, that video has over... 9,000 views, purely organic, nothing paid, a watch time of over a thousand hours, and it has gained us close to a hundred subscribers. That one video, (laughs) yeah, and that is giving you the impact of sharing content as well as sharing the stage with collaboration with collaborators and influencers. Because if you just join us, I started this session with saying the C word because apparently influencers is now a bad name, (laughs) right? So there is an impact to be had, especially in the Caribbean. And I've seen the numbers when it comes to the Jamaican market because they are quite an engaging bunch. I have never seen a bunch of people engage as highly as Jamaicans. So if that, if the Caribbean market is yours, I strongly suggest you explore that type of content because it's 
it's worked for us. <laughs> so check it out. All right. So now we're going to have uh, our main stage, our superstar, <laughs> Avalon. And she has some somewhat controversial views. Some of you may disagree with what some of the things that she said, but the intention is to have a conversation around influence and with that session with Dr. Terry Carell, we did speak about information. And I am thankful that Avalon did share information, things like how much she's being paid, as well as the impact she's had. And if she is someone who buys the newspapers and listens to the radio. So check this out. We are here with Avalon. She has over 13,000 followers on Instagram. I'm the CEO of Impact for Empower TT. Empower TT is a socially innovative platform for female entrepreneurs to connect and grow and just network. I'm co-owner of the MSC Grill along with my boyfriend and that's a local food grill in Trinidad. Shop No Lava, that is where I kind of dive into my passion for suits because that's my style. I love wearing suits. Let's ask Avalon a difficult question. Why doesn't she see herself as an influencer? Because that's what we call her, but she was like, no, I'm not. Especially locally, influencers have almost zero credibility. Almost zero. And I think it's because they focus so much on the fluff and of just getting products um, from brands or from persons that they don't really focus on the impact. There's a difference between being an influencer and being influential. And we have lost that within Trinidad and Tobago. I don't mind influential. I don't mind impactful. Which is your biggest platform? Instagram. And within that audience, who makes up the majority of uh, those followers that you have? on Instagram? It would be females between the ages of, let's say, 19 to 38, 39, and mainly located within the Caribbean. Or even Caribbean women that have migrated. I have quite a few Jamaica followers. Community members, I would say, because they're not just ghost followers. They engage, they connect. How do you manage all these platforms at once? Um, balance and systems. So whatever I post on Instagram automatically goes to Facebook and LinkedIn, my strategy is different for there because that's more of a professional platform. So on that platform, I more show Avalon, the founder of Empower TT, the entrepreneurial advocate on that platform. Initially, when I started thinking about Avalon, Avalon Gomez as a brand, um, I was heavy in marketing and I was what people would call an event promoter. So I threw a lot of boat rides, land events. So I had to build myself and Instagram was new back then and it was the best platform for that. Being a visual platform, a platform that focuses on video, visuals, videos, that kind of thing because people followed me in order to follow the event do you have brands reaching out to you asking to collaborate and if so can you mention a few of those brands digital trimbigo have reached out um i've done work with a lot of local entrepreneurs also um fs accessories um beauty brands local beauty brands like kj beauty the biggest cash out that I've had as somebody influential with my personal brand um, would have to be a three month contract that added up to somewhere around $40,000. Having a woman's wear as well as food. Which one is your biggest income? You know, which one brings in the most? Definitely the grill. The grill will be the biggest income you know. What are some of the tricks that you may have seen some of one of the 
key takeaways in the space that you're in when it comes to creating content on Instagram for business? Business is personal. So people want to interact with the face behind the business, the face behind the brand. Because a lot of people buy into emotion and people buy from people, not just products and services anymore. We want to interact with the person behind the brand. So that is a trick that I've learned from early and it has worked a lot for my businesses. Another thing is to be consistent on social media. Show up all the time. Post, but don't just post for posting sake. Post quality and post value because you always want your, your community to engage and be able to see the value in all your posts so that they stay engaged and stay following. Would you say that you are a competitor to traditional media? Um, I would say not yet but a lot of people tend to listen to their their community other than run to the newspaper or even radio at times unless there is somebody very impactful on on local media on the radio stations then they rather hear from us do you listen to the radio uh and when last have you bought a newspaper Last time I bought a newspaper was in, I don't know, probably January when I was featured on a newspaper. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry to all my media friends. But yeah, the last time I bought a newspaper was probably January when I was featured. And I normally only buy a newspaper when i'm featured every influencer or but we're using influencers right they have their own community so brand should see which influencer or which individual has the community that they want to tap into and at times we see brands aligning with persons that are not in their network or in the persons that they need so if you have a product that um, is female centered and you want more women or more professional women to get into it, then you go for a more professional woman instead of just a young beauty influencer. When it comes to how brands approach influencers, what, what advice would you give to that brand and what type of conversations that should happen between the brand and the influencer? The first question that the brand should ask is, are you willing? Are you willing to to work with us? Because a lot of people say yes to things, but they are not willing to execute to the level the brand deserves. Not needs, but deserves, right? Another question that the brand should ask is, um, like, who is your community? It's important that you know their niche, you know their reach. So it's important for people and so also send these metrics to the brands and the brands it is by right should request it a lot of times the connectivity from the marketing or the brand owner starts with an existing relationship with that influencer so it's not necessarily what's good for the company it's what's the easiest and what's going to get them into the party for free right I mean, you understand, right? And this is actually not singular to Trinidad. The value proposition is not even the start of the conversation. And with that said, then we can't have a conversation around return on investment. You know, we can't say, okay, we spend this amount with this influencer. And then because of that, we could then try these new influencers and things like that. Because a lot of influencers focus on getting the free product or getting free things that they would say yes to anything and some of the things they say yes to are not good or does not work but they say yes so they can get it right and and brands want the yes and for brands you should not pay for yes you should pay for it 
return on your investment? Would would this be a product that you would have used if we didn't come to you? Would this be a service you would use if we didn't come to you and offer it to you? I mean, let's start there. Like, what is the long-term goal? What is the long-term goal? And how many influencers have goals? Let's let's just start there. How many of them really have of goals or long-term goals like even if i work with a brand it needs to align with my end goal i wouldn't accept any and every interview to say i had an interview so let us know what is your brand what is your business as a business owner or an entrepreneur and then who you speak to or who is your community under being an influencer is it people in the beauty industry? Is it entrepreneurs? You know, is it fashion? Let us know that so that when a brand sees you or tries to reach out, they know what part of you they are coming for. Where should people follow you, Avalon? Where should they go? Check me out on Instagram at I am Avalon Gomez. Uh, I was in that session and I was shaking my head in complete agreement with all the things I learned. So I was like, preach it, preach it. It, it, it's, it went so well. We went over time. Thanks for still being here. And I just want to summarize some of the key points I think is going to work for your business, especially in uh, Trinidad where we're under state of emergency. There's this argument about being mentally taxing to be in front of a camera and it's important for you to understand that you have to be visual it may not be you in front of the camera but you have to strategize and find a way avalon said it you need to be visual you have to put that element in your business strategy and your content marketing strategy because where else will your potential customers see you you need to be personal because there's so much content out there what's your unique point what's your unique value and you there's only one you gonna get tony robbins up in here there's only one you so you need to be personal and finally that roi conversation if you look at my introduction on linkedin data is my only friend so if you're not having that data conversation it will never work out all right so i took i took i taken off my principal hat and i'm telling you join me Next week, it's going to be an interesting conversation with Daniel Loveless. He has over 30 million views on YouTube. He's also given us insight to some of the things that's going to happen with Facebook, as well as how much he charges. You are not going to want to miss this. If you check in the link below, you can register for the next event. His name is Daniel Loveless, and his name reminds me of Powerpuff Girls. And you'll have to watch out to find out why. So I'll see you next week at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time for the next episode of ACM Live. Bye, guys. Join me for the next couple of minutes where I cover all things digital marketing in the Caribbean. A campaign can run you anywhere from 15... And I'll see you in the next episode of ACM Live. Bye, guys. <laughs>